Right, so another definition which you know uh, they're easy marks um, if you learn them. So um, it's the EMF of a half cell created standard hydrogen uh, half cell, standard conditions 298 Kelvin, one mole per decimeter cubed for solutions, and um, uh, pressure is 100 uh, kilopascals or one atmosphere, whatever, whatever you like. Um, what is the standard potential of this nickel cadmium cell? It's going to be the difference between those two there, um, and the difference between those is going to be 1.25 volts. Right, using oxidation numbers, oh, okay, well, um, construct this oval cell equation that takes place during the um, discharge of this cell. So I need, you've got two electrons there, but only one electron there. So we, first of all, let's times this one by two, like so. That one is going to go that way, because it's most positive. That one will go that way. So let's see if we can work this one out. Plus 2H2O plus cadmium plus 2OH minus is going to go to cadmium hydroxide plus 2 nickel hydroxide plus 2 OH minus um, and it looks like I can cancel out those two OH minuses like so. Right, we've got the equation now and now it wants me to show, use an oxidation number to show the species that have been oxidised and reduced. So, let's try and work out my oxidation state of nickel here. Oxygen is minus 2, so that's minus 4 overall plus 1 there. So nickel must be plus three overall. Cadmium metal we know is zero. I'm gonna rub out my hydroxides, like so. So we've got a bit more space. Cadmium here, hydroxide is minus one, so cadmium there must be plus two, and nickel there must be plus two as well. So nickel has gone from plus three to plus two and therefore has been reduced. Cadmium has gone from zero to plus two and therefore has been oxidized. Okay, the next page, it wants me to think about the reactions that are gonna take place during charging. We said that during discharge, that goes that way, that goes that way. So the reverse is gonna happen when I charge. So when I charge, that will go that way, and that one will go that way. So the reverse reactions will occur. Right, I now need to predict the equations that are going to happen. So the first one, I've got hydroxide ions decomposing to form oxygen gas. And I'm also going to have some electrons here because this is negative, slightly negative on this side as well. Uh, just to get this to balance out nicely, if I put two waters there and I've got four hydroxide there, then I can have four electrons there and that all works out nicely. The next one is going to be, I've got to get rid of those waters. So that's water there. That, therefore, is going to now give me hydrogen gas as well. I'm going to have hydroxides uh, there as well. Um, to get that uh, to balance out, if I have, uh, I think that's okay, I need to have some electrons on this side as well. And if I have two of those to get my hydrogens to balance out, and then I have two of those as well, uh, all the atoms should balance as well, but I will also need to have two electrons there. Uh, again, it's a little bit of a ponder one um, for two marks. You don't want to spend too long doing that one. Right, so we've made it to the final question.
Um, so yippee yippee yay. Uh, let's uh, try and tackle this one. I need to write equations for step one, two, and four, uh, including state symbols, the ionic equations, and I need to determine the mass, the centrifugal mass of copper in the glass. So a lot of information there for you to read through. Let's try and work our way through this. So I'll try and let's keep step two up there. Excess sodium carbonate is added to neutralize any acid. So that one's not too bad, is it? That's just going to be a carbonate reacting with acid to give you carbon dioxide gas, which is why it effervesces, and water. So that's one of the equations that really um, is good for you to know. Um, Okay, so I now need to write equations for steps one, two, and uh, four. So they've given me the half equations. Um, I need to obviously times this one by two all the way across and then add them together. So um, if you do that, uh, they've given me the symbol, so copper plus four, because that will become four, that becomes two, that becomes two, that becomes two, and that becomes two. Uh, four HNO3 uh, is going to go to copper two plus aqueous plus two NO3 minus aqueous plus NO2 gas plus 2H2O liquid um, and HNO3 is a liquid. So that's that one sorted. Uh, not too bad. Uh, yep, that looks good. So the next one I need to write for steps two and three. Excess sodium carbonate is added to neutralize any acid. So that is your bulk standard neutralization of a carbonate to produce water and carbon dioxide gas, which is why it fizzes. A precipitate form, so you've got copper ion, copper two plus ions knocking around you've made there. You've added a whole load of carbonate ions, like so, so it will produce copper carbonate solid, like so. The next one is uh, step four. I want to make equations for step four. So what's happening? I've got some copper two plus ions there. I've just added a whole load of iodide ions, and they told me I've made copper one iodide precipitate plus iv as a solution. So to get that to balance, if you coppers plus two there, plus one there, ID's minus one there and zero there, but I've got two of them. So minus one times two is a change of minus two overall. So I've got to times my coppers by two as well. And in order to get that to balance therefore first, I need that one to become four, like so. Okay, and the final one, I now need to determine the percentage of copper. So the first thing you do is you work out your moles of fire sulfate. That's going to be your concentration, 0.100, times the volume of 29.8 over 1,000. And if you do that, you get 2.98 times 10 to the minus 3. You've got to relate that to the moles of copper. So, we did this equation a minute ago. This one, they just told me... So, copper produced a half I2 there, 
So if I times this one like so. So two coppers produce one ID, and one ID in the actual two thiosulfate. So the ratio between thiosulfate to copper, you've got to keep these the same, is two to two or one to one. And therefore moles of copper two plus is going to be the same. That was in 25 centimeters cubed. So moles of copper, 2.98 times 10 to the minus 2 in 250, which was the original volume. They want me to convert that into a mass. So to do that, I times by the molar mass, which is 63.5. That gives me 1.89 grams. And then easy peasy, let me squeeze it, 1.89, go back in the pot, divided by 2.80 times 100 gives you 67.6%, like so.